Hi everyone, this is Paddy McGill from Thinkific here. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar where we're going to be teaching you the proven email marketing formula to sell your online course. Uh, so all the Thinkific users, thank you so much for joining us. I, I've got with me uh, Liz from Aweber and she is their senior content marketing specialist and also a professional copywriter and she's sent hundreds of millions uh, of emails, uh, hundreds of emails to millions of subscribers around the world. So, you know, this is the best person to learn from today. Liz, thank you so much, uh, you know, for, for hosting this talk for our uh, valued customers. Oh, thank you, Patty. Thank you for the introduction. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining. I'm going to turn off my webcam as we go so that you can focus on the presentation. But I'm so excited to have you guys here. And I think you're going to love this presentation and what email marketing can do to promote your course. Perfect. All right. Turning off the webcam. I'm going to turn mine off as well, but I'm going to stick around the chat. If you've got any questions, I'll do my best to answer questions and uh, we'll we'll get a shot on the road. All right. Great. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, yeah, and if you want to drop into chat, uh, introduce yourself. I'd love to see who all is here. I know uh, Carrie is here, and she says, let's do this. Uh, welcome, Carrie. Uh, so yeah, feel free to drop that into chat. Um, Carrie says, hi. Hi, Michelle. Uh, from Michelle from, I think, Minnesota. Oh, Minneapolis. I apologize. Hi. Oh, hi, everybody. Uh, okay, great. Great to meet you all. Um, before we get started, uh, into this awesome workshop, I want to show you guys a video, uh, and I think you'll I think you'll like this video, but probably not for the right reasons. So let me know in the chat if you can't hear it uh, when I hit play. <laughs> Okay, was everyone able to hear and see that video? Uh, let me know in chat. I hope you all heard it. Oh, yes, everyone's saying yes. So, uh, your reaction may have been laughing. It may have been something similar to this, uh, which is, this is the worst. Uh, and that was actually done by a local advertising agency. It ended up going viral, but because it was so bad. And I think that's often how we feel about selling. Selling is hard difficult. It's hard. It's hard to make it feel natural. And that video certainly isn't natural and doesn't necessarily make you want to buy from them. Uh, selling is difficult. And that's just, you know, it, it's just hard to bring it up in a natural way and to feel like you're not being a sleazy salesman. So today we're going to talk about two things. First off, I'm going to talk about building your audience with email marketing, how to grow an email list of people who want to hear from you and who want to buy your course because email is one of the most powerful ways to sell your course. It's one of the most effective ways and so many course creators rely on it to sell their course uh, and we rely on it here as a, at Way Weber to sell our own paid courses. So I'm going to show you a technique to build your audience and to build the right kind of audience but I'm also going to show you how to sell your course and how to sell it naturally. Uh, and sell it in a way that doesn't feel like that video where you're kind of cringing and where it comes out of nowhere and you don't want to buy. It doesn't make you want to buy. So I'm going to show you how to sell your course with email marketing in a natural and powerful way. And obviously your course and selling it is more about than just making money. It's also about helping more people reach their dreams and goals. As a course creator, you're solving a problem and you're helping your audience, you're educating on them on something that means a ton to them. So this, this, this workshop is also going to show you how to put your course in the hands of the people who need it most. So before we get started, Patty did a great introduction of me, so I don't really need to say too much. I'm Liz Willits, a senior content marketing specialist at AWeber. If you'd like to follow me, my Twitter handle is Liz Willits. Uh, I've been working at AWeber for three years now, and I'm obsessed with the email industry, and I'm obsessed with email marketing. 
it's such a powerful tool and it's a great way to promote your business. Uh, I just recently spoke at Content Marketing Conference in Boston and like Patty said, I've sent a ton of emails and I'm a writer. Uh, so I'm really excited to be here with you all today. So real quick, AWeber is an email marketing company in the Philly suburbs. We help more than 100,000 businesses connect with their audience through our email marketing platform. We're celebrating our 20 year anniversary this year. So we are one of the oldest tech companies out there. Uh, we actually started the same year as Google. Uh, so of all the email marketing platforms out there, we're one of the first. Uh, so that's, that's who we are. So when it comes to email marketing, most people do a simple email marketing strategy like this. They have a sign-up form and their sign-up form says something like, sign up for my wildly awesome emails, you won't regret it. And there's a name and there's an email address. This is a very simple sign-up form. It's very, very popular. This is what a lot of people do. Uh, it just asks people to simply subscribe to the email newsletter and promises valuable content. But there are a lot of problems with this form. This is what most people do, but it's really not that effective. Then, often what most people will do is once someone subscribes to their list, they'll send them an automated email series like this. This is how an automated email series looks in AWeber's automation platform. So. For our imaginary example here, we're using a, a guitar teacher, a guitar instructor, someone who's teaching people how to play guitar. Here's a simple automated series they might send with a couple days in between each email they send. So you can see they're teaching people in that second email how to learn seven scales and be on fire. So this is a simple series. Uh, and again, this is what a lot of people do, but there, this is, there are ways to improve upon this. And someone might send a basic email newsletter, like this one for this guitar instructor who sends an email newsletter uh, with basic content in it and a CTA button. And then eventually they may have a button like this in one of their emails. And that button is asking people to buy now. And so they go from their email newsletter, from their automated series to just a buy now button. Uh, this is very common, so many people do it. And this tactic might work for some people, but it definitely doesn't work for, ever, for everyone and there are a lot of opportunities to improve this format. Here's the problem. To ask people to buy now, we don't know much about our subscribers yet. Sending that basic automated series, we don't know what our subscribers need. We don't know what level they are, what their problems are. Uh, we really know nothing about them. So when we're sending email content, we can't send content that's personalized to them at any level. So we don't know anything about them. That's the first problem. Our second problem is that our subscribers don't know much about us yet. And as we know, as most marketers know, people buy from people they know, like, and trust. And at this point, all we've done is send them a few emails with a bit of educational content. Uh, we haven't built a relationship. And thirdly, this pitch probably feels out of place. Uh, so people are signing up for an email newsletter and all of a sudden you're sending them a buy now button to buy your course. Uh, so they might feel like, wait a minute, like, well, I, I didn't, I didn't want to buy your course. I don't know what this is. I don't know who you are. Um, so that's the third problem with this basic email strategy. But there's a simple fix for this. And that's what I want to talk about today. And that simple fix is, uh, is the email mini course. So what is an email mini course? It's a short free course which precedes your paid course. The course content is delivered via email and the topic of the mini course is closely tied to your paid course topic. So the beauty of an email mini course is not only can it help you grow your email list, but it can help you get new customers for your Thinkific course. So like I said, it's gonna fulfill two goals for you today, which is growing your list and selling your course, plus also the third goal of educating your audience. So here's how an email mini course might work and how it would change uh, that basic email strategy I just showed you. 
So here's that same sign up form, but it's offering an incentive of a mini course now. So it's offering the five day riff bending boot camp, and it teaches you to master the basics of heavy metal in just five days. So this has already flipped the sign up form upside down. Instead of saying to people, you know, sign up for my really cool newsletter updates, we're saying sign up to get this awesome value and you're going to learn from me, which is great. This will make people more likely to opt in so you'll grow your email list faster. So it's a pretty basic incentive and an incentive is uh, something you give to people in exchange for subscribing to your list. But it's a great incentive because as a course creator, you're already positioning yourself that way with your subscribers from day one by giving them a mini course. So it's going to increase your opt-in rate, but it also is going to start to build that relationship with your audience. So here is uh, the same, a similar automated series to what I showed you before, but the emails now look different. Notice that this is our mini course and we're giving people their lessons via this automated series. And you can see that I've used uh, a subject line of RBB within brackets, within every subject line, and that's a Riff Bending Bootcamp, uh, the acronym for it. So that's a great way to name your email mini course, to have a little acronym for it so people can recognize it in their inbox. And then you can see that I just deliver a simple welcome email for the course. One day later, people get lesson one, one day later they get lesson two, and another day later they get lesson three. So this is awesome because if someone forgets to open a lesson email or they forget to complete one, they can go back and find the other lessons and figure out the correct order easily. And this is a great way to deliver your course. And it's automatic. So because we're using email automation, there's really no setup on your side. You have someone opt into your list to receive the mini course, they automatically receive it via email and there's nothing you need to do there. Um, and there's no need to host it anywhere also. Uh, and again, this is using Aweber's campaigns platform. So instead of building a mini course in a, on a website, this is an easy way to deliver your mini course and a cheap and expensive way to deliver a mini course. And then eventually, you might consider sending this email at the end of your mini course. And you can see that this offers uh, a limited time offer for the, um, the extended course, which is paid. So instead of promoting something of a buy now button that feels unnatural, we're saying, hey, you've graduated from the Riff Bending Boot Camp. What did you think? Uh, and then it says, because you've made it this far, why turn back now? Your journey is just, just beginning. And then it says, our team of guitar experts have put together a wildly popular video course called Mastering the Axe to take your skills to the next level. And then you can have bullet points there explaining the value, and then people can purchase. So this is a much more natural way to introduce your purchasing, because people have already learned from you. They know you're a great teacher because you shared with them that valuable mini course and we're also making them feel special by saying they've graduated from the beginner course and reminding about them about what they've learned and encouraging them to learn more so now let's take a look at what's going on here so likely like i said we're getting more subscribers with a mini course uh, it's a more attractive incentive for someone to join your list than just saying you know get my newsletter Two, we're nurturing our subscribers. We're delivering structured and consistent value by giving them this mini course with a lesson a day. They're getting value from us, which builds that relationship uh, and helps them you know, value who we are as an instructor. And our subscribers are achieving small victories. So they are learning and they're getting excited about the topic. With our Riff Bending Bootcamp, they're starting to learn how to play guitar and they're starting to get really excited about it. And that's the perfect time to introduce your course because people are already excited about what they're learning from you and they want to advance their skills. So your mini course can just be the a basic version of your main course or introduction to your main course. But again, this is just a taste. We're still agitating the problem. At the end of your mini course, people still have a lot they need to learn. You've just touched the surface and they really want to learn it because they're excited about it. So that's another advantage of your mini course. 
also our subscribers are spending time with us every single day and like i mentioned earlier people buy from people they know like and trust and by being in the inbox every day with your subscriber giving them value they can come to know, like, and trust you. They know you're a great teacher because they've seen your mini course and how great it was, and they trust you because you've given them all this valuable content. So at this point, when you go to sell, it doesn't feel like someone they don't know is selling them a product they don't want. It's someone they do know who's already their instructor, and they're selling them a product that they really, really want. And additionally, the pitch feels natural. Once someone finishes a mini course, you can naturally int introduce a pitch of, why stop now? You've learned all of this, why stop now? Advance your skills and master them. So there's a lot going on with a mini course and a lot of value there. But to really help you understand what this might look like in real life, I'm going to show you a quick case study. And this case study is of Felicia Ricci. She is an online singing coach and she helps people find their voice through her own online courses. And really cool fact about her, in her first life as a professional actress, uh, she performed the lead role of Elphaba in the Broadway tour of Wicked. So if you've ever seen Wicked, uh, she was uh, the star of that in the uh, Broadway tour of it. So she's a phenomenal singer and she is really fun to learn from because she's very natural in her courses. But she has paid online courses that she sells and she also has a free email mini course, which she uses to grow her list, but also to build her audience for her paid course. And here's how she does that. She first has this sign up form, which appears on her website. And the headline says, want to learn how to belt sing for free. Discover the crazy simple three step formula that'll teach you how to belt like a pro. It's 100% free. And then uh, she explains that it's 40 minutes of video and 15 minutes of audio. So she's explaining all the value there in the bullet points and then she just asks for your for your name and your email address and you can get instant access so this sign up form is really compelling because it's giving people all the value that they're going to get simply by giving their email address so this is a great tool for her to grow her list and to grow her audience and that audience is someone she can promote her other paid courses to here is the welcome email from her course and then she thanks people for joining. And then she gives them a link to lesson one of the mini course. And this is simply a video on a landing page and it's a 15 minute video, so it's pretty simple. And you could use YouTube for this. So you could just link off to a YouTube video if that's a simple way to do it. Um, you could probably do it in Thinkific as well. Uh, you could even include a written lesson within your email. So instead of linking off to a video, you could have your entire lesson within the email itself. So this is the first lesson from her mini course, but also notice her first line of this email or the second line of her email. She says, I'm doing a happy dance, which includes the warm, popping and locking and several leaps. One of the things she does really well as a copywriter, as an email copywriter is being relational and having this tone that conveys how fun and cool she is. Uh, so it's a really fun tone and she Im includes a bit of herself in each email, which is something you can definitely do as you're writing your own emails. And then she uh, ends her email with let's belt together like champions, XO Fell. Uh, so she goes by the nickname of Fell as well. So that is lesson one of her, mini of her free mini course. Here's lesson two. Uh, and it again includes a link to a short video. And you can see this email is super short. You don't need to make your mini course emails long. You don't need to make them complicated. Uh, you can simply link off to a video or a link off to a worksheet. Uh, and so she does it in a very simple way in this second email. Here is uh, the end of the course. Uh, so this is where she starts promoting uh, advanced mental techniques. So this is her way of starting to introduce more advanced concepts, which is gonna help her sell her course later on. So now the course is over. She begins this next email with, yo, in my crash course training videos, you probably heard me mention my longer belting course called Belt Your Face Off. 
she explains what this course is, and then she says in that third paragraph something really cool. So let's look at this in detail. So again, yo, uh, and she explains what her Belt Your Face Off course is, and it's, she says, this will take what you learned from our quick crash course, that's her mini course, and really build some serious belting technique. So she's naturally saying, naturally bringing in this next course as the next step for people. Uh, so it just makes sense for them to take this course because it's going to build upon what they've already learned. And then she says, because I love this course and want to share it with as many singers as possible, I am offering a 30% discount for a few days only. Just enter the code BELTBABYBELT at checkout. And you can click that link and get a discount on the course. And this is really smart because she's giving people a short time offer to purchase her course. Then the next day, she mentions that tomorrow at midnight, your 30% off discount code for Belt Your Face Off expires. So she's promoting the course. She's using urgency uh, because people have a limited amount of time to get the course and they have this special promo code. So she only gives this promo code to people who take her mini course. So this is another way she's treating them as special. Uh, she's treating them as if she has a relationship with them. And that's a really important part of email marketing. Uh, so she's giving them that exclusive discount to make them feel like they're special and uh, she's also encouraging them to act right away. Okay, so that was our case study of how Fell uses a mini course to promote her paid course. And again, that entire mini course is all in an automated email series. So Fell can just set it up one time. She has her sign up form on her website. And that will send to every new subscriber all the time and she can sell her course automatically in a really natural way. It's really effective to use a mini course to build a relationship with your audience and then introduce your paid course and sell it. So this is a really effective way for her to have an evergreen email series that sells her course for her. She just leaves that up on her website and her course is getting sold without her having to do any additional effort, which is really powerful. But that's just a basic mini course. So you're looking at this slide right now that says, let's get jiggy with it. Uh, well, I wanna show you a few ways to level up that basic mini course uh, using powerful email automation. So if you're just getting started, you might wanna just focus on that basic mini course I just showed you. But these are some ways that you can level up your mini course uh, using email automation. So let's get jiggy with it. I'll show you uh, some of the really cool things you can do with email automation and your mini course. So one thing you can do is segment your audience based on clicked links. Uh, so if you're not aware what segmenting is, it's when you send emails, and it's when instead of sending emails to your entire email list, you send email, an email to a portion of your list that has something in common. So you might have heard of the term email blast. An email blast is an email that's sent to your entire list that doesn't take in mind who your subscribers are or what they're like. Segmenting, on the other hand, is sending an email to a portion of your list who have something in common. So they may have in common uh, that they're all beginners or they may have in common that they all clicked your last email. Uh, so whatever it is, your segment is a smaller subset of your main list and it helps you deliver more personalized, more relevant content to your audience. So here's an example of how you might do that in your mini course. Uh, so what you could do in the welcome email, in the first email of your mini course, you could say, welcome to Riff Bending Bootcamp. Again, that's using our guitar example. Uh, we're ready to kick off your, your quest to Shred City, but first, tell us a bit about yourself. And then we ask people to tell us whether they're just getting started or whether they're more advanced. And when they clicked, when they click on one of these links, they automatically get tagged in the email marketing platform, in Aweber in this case. And here's what that looks like. So when someone clicks the beginner link, they get a tag beginner. And when someone clicks the advanced link, they get in a tag of advanced. And this will be associated with them as a subscriber in their email marketing platform. And what it allows us to do is to send content to them that's segmented to them. So here's an example automation series we could use. 
uh, and it says at the beginning there, we trigger these campaign, this campaign when these tags are applied. And a campaign is an automated series. So when someone has the beginner tag, they'll get this automated campaign. But on the other hand, if someone has an advanced tag, they would get a different campaign. So this allows us to segment people based off their skill level. And if you're a course creator, you know that your course is geared, is most likely geared to a certain skill level. Uh, you may have two courses. You may have a beginner course. You may have an advanced course. But if you promote the advanced course to beginners, that's probably overwhelming to them and they might not complete the course. They might not purchase the course. Uh, whereas if you promote your <laughs> beginner course to advanced students, they're going to think it's boring. Uh, so they might not finish your mini course and they probably won't buy your paid course because they think that uh, you're not teaching on the same level that they need. So again, if we'd sent beginner info to our advanced students, they'd have been bored quickly. And if we sent advanced content to beginner students, they would have been overwhelmed quickly. So if you have two paid courses, this is a great way to promote that course to the right person. If you have a beginner course, you can promote that to your beginner students after the mini course is over. And if you have advanced students, you can promote your advanced course to them after the advanced series is over. So again, this is a great way to segment people based off their skill level. So why would we want to do this? Well, first off, there's this marketing cliche that a lot of people use, but it's true. And that is that you want to send the right content to the right person. You'll have a better chance to engage and convert that person. And that's absolutely true here. By segmenting people by skill level, you can send them the right mini course, but then when it gets to be time to sell your paid course to them, you can promote the right paid course to them. And you may be saying here, well, I only have one course. I don't have an advanced course, um, I just have a beginner course. Uh, and in that case, it might be that you don't promote your beginner course to your advanced students if you're using this method. It might be that uh, you talk to your advanced students and you ask them, you send them a segmented email and you ask them, hey, you might have noticed I only have a beginner course, but I would love to create an advanced course for you. What would you like to learn? So you can actually learn from them uh, what kind of course you would want to create for them in that case. And still, even if you only have the one course, if you're promoting it to the wrong people, they're not gonna buy it and they're probably gonna give you a bad review. But secondly, more sales with the perfect product, you're gonna pitch the right, you're gonna pitch the right product to the right person uh, with segmentation. And finally, I put down here data, sweet, sweet data. Uh, so I love data as a marketer. I'm obsessed with data, uh, but it's really, really valuable to you because knowing your audience on a deeper level will help you understand what kind of courses to create, how to promote those courses. Um, so you may find out that 90% of your students are beginners. And in that case, you probably want to create more beginner courses. Uh, or you might notice that everybody's advanced and you don't have an advanced course yet. So you really need to create that advanced course. So this is a great way to learn about your audience and to build better products for them and send segmented content to them. So other ways to get jiggy with it. One, uh, you can extend your nurturing series. So at the end of your series, after you promote your paid course uh, and ask people if they wanna buy your paid course, some of them may not buy yet. So you could have a link uh, at, in an email after that sales email that says, are you not ready yet? And if someone uh, clicks that, that would mean that they're not ready to purchase yet. And it could trigger an extended email campaign based off that. So if someone doesn't buy in that last email in your series, you're sending them another series which will get them to convert or try to get them to convert. So instead of having a dead end to your email series, you continue promoting content to your subscribers. You can also send reminder emails to non-openers. This is a little bit more advanced, but let's say in your mini course that someone doesn't open lesson one. Instead of immediately sending them lesson two, you could send them an email the next day that says, hey, you didn't finish lesson one yet. Uh, and you could send that to only to people who did not open 
lesson one, the lesson one email. So you could definitely do that for all of the lessons in your mini course. If someone doesn't open a lesson, you send them a reminder email the next day using automations and tags. So that's another really cool thing you can do. You can also save your segments for future promotions. So you can send one-time one emails to segments to pitch new products, courses, or offers. So for instance, with let's say we have a bunch of subscribers with our advanced tag, uh, and you don't have an advanced product yet. But one month later, uh, you start working on your advanced product, and a few months after that, you've finished your advanced course, and you're ready to promote it to an audience. You already have a segment of email subscribers who've told you that they're advanced. So you can simply send them an email saying, hey, my advanced course is here. Uh, can you, are you ready to buy it yet? And sell your advanced course to them. And you know that this course is right for your, for your subscribers because you already asked them and they self-identified as advanced. So all the concepts I talked about today are some things you can do in AWeber. So if you're ready to build your own email mini course, you can try AWeber free for 30 days. Just use this link here, and that's bit.ly forward slash AWeber dash 30 dash free. Uh, and this is a completely free trial, uh, so you can try this out. Uh, AWeber has all of the automation features to let you do this mini course and even do some of the more advanced things I showed you. So if you're interested in trying AWeber, uh, feel free to use this link. I can also drop it into the chat for you guys. Uh, and then I want to do a quick poll uh, before we get to questions. I will have a questions section at the end of this, so stick around if you do have questions. Uh, but I was wondering if you guys could answer a really quick poll for me. And it should be popping up on your screen. Uh, let me know if you can't see it. Can everyone see the poll? Oh, wait, oh, it should be launched now. Okay. So take a moment uh, and let me know in that poll if you're interested in learning more about AWeber. You can simply say no, but if you're interested in learning more, uh, we can give you some more information about us and what we do and even how to launch this mini course that I showed you today. Uh, so feel free to submit that. I'll leave that open for a few seconds uh, more, but also start submitting your questions into the questions panel. If you have questions about anything I showed you today, you want some email marketing advice, uh, and you wanna know how not to uh, create a video like I showed you at the beginning, uh, then just type those into the questions panel. I'm happy to answer all of your questions. And I'm gonna close the poll now as well. So we're starting to get some questions in here. Thanks, everybody. And thanks again, everybody, for being here. Uh, I'm going to switch over to our question slide. Uh, great to have you all here, and I'm really excited to talk about email marketing. Uh, so someone said to me, I'm not good at the email marketing sales text. Do you have templates? Yes, I do. Uh, let me quickly get those templates for you guys. I'll uh, put them in the chat window. We actually have... Let's see, how many is it? 45 plus uh, email copy templates. Uh, and we have we give away a free course to give those to you. Um, so let me get that link for you guys in the chat. The course is absolutely free, uh, no strings attached. And it's not, it's not even a mini course like I showed you guys today. Actually, actually, it is technically a mini course. So if you guys wanna sign up for this and see what our mini course looks like. It includes a PDF and mini course content. I'm dropping that into the chat now. It's called What to Write. And it includes 45 email content templates. And those are like fill in the blank templates. So it's kind of like Mad Libs. If you're not a great writer, you can just drop uh, those words in the blank and have email copy templates ready to go. So if you don't like to write, writing's not your thing, these templates are awesome. But the course will also teach you a bunch of email writing concepts as well. So did everyone see that course I dropped in the chat? Again, it's 100% free, so feel free to sign up for it. Um, all right, someone uh, says that, how do I get into chat? It's not showing up on my screen. Uh, there's a, usually there should be a chat window on the on the right hand side of your screen, I believe. I'm dropping it into another, I dropped it into the questions window, uh, but I'm also dropping it into chat. 
So you guys should see that there in the chat window. Amy says, thank you. She saw it. Great. Um, great. Everyone's seeing it. Um, oh, Warwick says, the ebook is really great, so I can recommend it. As a he's saying, what to write is great. Yeah, check it out. It's I love that course, and I helped uh, write it and create it. And it's all about helping you send really great emails. Uh, and we actually have a question, and it's about using emojis in subject line. Uh, does it affect deliverability or make emails go to spam? I see more emojis being used all the time. So um, that's a great question, and I hear it a lot. Emojis don't affect your deliverability unless you're using them like you're using all emojis instead of text. Uh, if you're using one emoji in your subject line, uh, that does not hurt your deliverability, and it can actually really improve your deliverability. Our director of deliverability uh, here at A. Weber once told me, recommended that I use, sub, I use emojis in subject lines to increase open rates. Uh, so yes, you can definitely do that. It's not gonna hurt your deliverability. And uh, I, I, it's, it's worked for us here at A. Weber to boost open rates. Uh, so Diane says, I'm just starting out, no email list yet. What can you suggest that I can do to build it? Well, first, I would definitely recommend uh, creating a sign-up form for your list if you don't have one already. Um, so you can create a sign-up form, and you could create a mini course, too, as your incentive to get people to sign up. Uh, so I definitely recommend having an incentive on your sign-up form that encourages more people to sign up. And you can put that sign-up form on your website, or you could simply create, if you don't have a website yet, you could simply create a single landing page with an email sign-up form on it to start building your list. Or we have something here at AWeber you, that you can do with AWeber. We have a sign-up form builder in our platform, and you can build a hosted sign-up form in AWeber. And what that will let you do uh, is it'll give you a link to a sign-up form. So you can simply send that link to people, and it'll pull up a sign-up form in their web browser, and they can sign up for your list that way. Uh, but beyond building your sign-up form, uh, I think the best way that I recommend to get started with List Growth is to reach out to your connections that you already have and send them your sign-up form. So, I mean, your LinkedIn connections, your Twitter connections, your Facebook connections, even your friends. And uh, when you reach out to these people, they may not be your ideal target audience. So if you're reaching out to your grandma or your mom uh, and sending them your sign-up form, they may not be in your target audience. But what you can say to them, uh, you can tell them, hey, you know, this may not be right for you, this offer I have, uh, but it might be right for someone you know. If you know someone that this would be great for, could you send it to them? So as an example, let's say you're a, you're a running coach and you send your grandma an email and you say to her, hey grandma, I know you're not running uh, right now, but do you have people uh, you know that really wanna learn how to run a 5K? I have this free mini course that will show them how to do it. Could you send it along to them? Uh, so you can use your personal connections like that, but most of us also have a huge LinkedIn audience, we have a Twitter audience, and we have a Facebook audience, and you can post your sign-up form in all those places and be really personal and tell people, hey guys, I'm just starting my email list, I'm really trying to find the right people, here's what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to teach, teach people how to do this thing, and I really want to help a bunch of people out, could you forward this along to your friends who would be great for it, or sign up yourself. Uh, so that's one of the best ways I recommend to start growing your email list. You can also do things like webinars and guest blog posts and Facebook ads, but those are a little bit more advanced. So someone just asked if I sign up for the $19 a month uh, plan and hit 501 subscribers, is it possible to set it up so that I automatically move up to the next tier? Yes, that's from Michael. Yes, it'll just move you up to the next tier for you. And then we have a question that says, if you are doing a beginner level course, what kind of info do you suggest putting into the mini course? It seems like giving away the milk for free. So why buy the cow? That's a great point. And that's from Rashid. Uh, that's, a, that's a really good point. So what you wanna do in your mini course is be more basic than your begin even your beginner paid course. Uh, so and it's easy to do that. It may seem like it's difficult to do, but it's actually easier than you think.
So let's take a topic like um, how to run a 5K, uh, for instance. So let's say you have a paid course where you're teaching people how to train for and run a 5K. In your mini course, you could simply teach them, lesson one could be about the health benefits of running and why running is so good for you. Lesson two could be one simple running workout that they can do in one day. Uh, and then lesson three could be about, uh, let's say like the kind of music you should listen to while you're running to get you pumped up. What's the right kind of music? And maybe lesson four in your mini course could be about uh, nutrition and like the kind of foods you should be eating when you're uh, training for a 5K. Now those four lessons in your mini course, they certainly won't replace your beginner course. Your beginner course could cover, you know, like the, the 20 workouts you need to do to prep for your 5K. And your mini course doesn't cover that at all. But why this is not giving away, uh, Rashid's point was, it seems like it's giving away the milk for free, so why buy the cow? Uh, it, but it's not because you're talking about different concepts and what it's allowing you to do is you're showing your subscribers that you are a professional, you know what you're talking about and you're an expert. What's really hard for our audiences in an online digital world is trust. Uh, so building trust with your audience is the biggest barrier to selling your course, I would say. Uh, it's People have to trust and know that you're gonna actually be giving them value if they're gonna pay money. And giving free educational value is the best way to build trust because your subscriber is saying, this person really knows what they're talking about. And if they gave me all of this educational value for free, how much more are they going to give me if I, if I pay for a course? So it's a great way to actually build a relationship and build trust so people are more likely to buy. So Wendy asks... What would be the maximum number of emails to have in one segment of a campaign? I'd hate to turn them off with too many emails. So I think what you're asking is, um, is there like a point where the segment stops? Uh, is there a point like where you get to too many email addresses and the segment stops working? Is that, I think that's what you're saying, Wendy. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, but in which, in which that case, if that's the case, your, your segment can be as big as you'd like it to be. Uh, if you have, let's say you have 10,000 people who click the beginner link, uh, you can have a segment of 10,000 people. Uh, that's not a problem at all. Uh, so someone asked, how does a Weber charge by month or by number of emails? Uh, so we do have a monthly, basically a service fee, a uh, basic service fee. And then we do charge by the number of subscribers you have. Uh, so you can see the different plans on our pricing page. I'll, I'll post our pricing page in the chat window. And let me also post that link for a free trial for you all. There's the pricing, so you guys can check out the pricing. Uh, but let me pull up that link for the free trial. It's right there. So you don't have to pay anything to get this free trial for 30 days. Uh, let me write it in the... I'm putting it in chat right now for you guys. There you guys go. Uh, oop, I typed it wrong. Okay, hold on one sec. I'm going to retype it for you. Let me put a little extra thing in there. Okay, that should be right. Okay, yeah, so check that out. Um, it's totally free, and you can also check out the pricing. So Grace asks, any recommendation of how long email should be? half page, no more than three paragraphs. Uh, and what I would say, Grace, is um, it really depends. So I think email should be long enough that you're conveying the point you need to convey. Uh, so if you're trying to sell your course, your email might need to be longer uh, because you're trying to get a person to buy something. Uh, so in which case, that email could be 10, 20 paragraphs. Uh, or as long as it takes to convince people of the value of your course. Whereas if you're just um, sending people a free lesson from your mini course, that could be two paragraphs. It could be six sentences uh, because you're not trying to convince someone to make a purchase. So you're always in an email, you should always be trying to convince someone to take an action. So you should always have a call to action at the end of your email. 
depending on the commitment someone is making with that call to action, that should kind of determine the length of your copy. So if it's a big commitment, like they have to pay money to buy your course, you might need more copy to email copy to convince them to do that. Whereas if you're just giving them something for free, you probably don't need to spend a long time explaining to them why they should do this free thing uh, because it's free value for them. But what I would say is when you're writing your email, make sure to use short sentences and short paragraphs. So I usually try to keep paragraphs to three sentences and I try to keep sentences as simple and as short as possible because when people are reading online uh, it's difficult to read long sentences and long paragraphs so one of the simplest ways to make your content more readable is to use short sentences and uh, short paragraphs this might break the rules you learned in english class but that's okay writing for the digital world is a little bit different Peter asks, is there will be a replay? Uh, yes, there will be a replay. We'll send that out later today, hopefully. Uh, and then Cynthia asks, how long is a 30-day trial good till? It's, um, I'm not going to close the deal for you guys. You guys can take advantage of that when you're ready to. Um, I, you know, I, I think that is there for you for when you need it. So don't feel like, I know uh, typically marketers use a lot of urgency, uh, but that's available there for you. If you decide that this weekend you want to buy, or if you decide, or, I mean, this weekend you want to use the free trial, or today you want to get the free trial, that's open to you. Because for some people, you may not be ready at right this moment in which case you can't take advantage of your full 30 free days. So uh, feel free to wait until you're ready. Leanne says, thanks for a great presentation. It was really helpful. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining. And so then uh, Giovanna uh, asks, why are the emails spaced after one day and not two days or more? Uh, so you could set this up however you want. I see many courses with all kinds of different day delays in between the emails. Some people do three days, some people do one day. Uh, it depends on your audience. For what to write in your emails course, uh, which I, got, I sent you guys the link to that, we give people the option to get the emails every day, to get a lesson email once a day, or to get two lessons emails a day, or to get a lesson email every other day. So you can even give people the choice of what they want to do with Aweber. Uh, it usually varies based off people's schedule. So if someone's really busy, they may not have the time to do a lesson every day. Uh, so if your audience is really busy, you might want to spread that out and make it one lesson a week or even one lesson every other day. So it's totally up to you, the uh, day delays or even the week delays you use between emails. Obviously, you have a faster sales cycle if you can get to your mini to the end of your mini course more quickly. So if you do it, uh, if you send your mini course with one day delays between each email, uh, and you have four lessons, then the mini course is over in four days. And on day five, you could pitch your course. Uh, but that might hurt your, your ability to sell the course. So I would recommend testing different time delays and asking your audience, you know, what email frequency actually works for you? Uh, is it better to have one lesson a day or is it better for you to have a lesson every other day? So I definitely recommend surveying your audience to see what they think. So Bill asks, how is AWeber different or similar to Zapier? Uh, so Zapier is a tool that allows you to connect different tools. Uh, so for instance, if you wanted to connect your Thinkific account to AWeber, uh, you could use, we have a direct integration, but you could also use Zapier, I believe. Uh, and what that would allow you to do is when someone joins your course, it would move their, their email subscriber over to a Weber, and so it would add them to a list automatically. So when someone purchases your Thinkific course or enrolls, they would automatically be added to an AWeber list. But because we have a direct integration, you wouldn't need to use Zapier. Uh, you could if you wanted to, but Zapier is great for connecting different applications together so that they are integrated. Uh, what AWeber does is we're an email marketing platform, so we help you send uh, the emails to promote your, your paid course. Uh, we also help you set up your marketing automation and your email automation. And we have a sign up form platform as well and email analytics. And we also have a customer support team to help you use all of that. 
Uh, so here's a good question from Katie. Uh, so she asks, if the email sequence is automated, how do you set the discount to expire for each person taking the mini course at different times? Great question, Katie. Uh, now there are some tools that'll automatically help you create expiring links. Uh, so you can feel free to research and find those tools. Uh, so there are tools that'll help you do that automatically, but you probably will have to pay a small fee to use them. Uh, but one thing that we have done here at Aweber is we go into our automated email, let's say on a weekly basis, and we update our code. Uh, so you could change your code in the automated email once a week to keep refreshing it. Uh, so that's a way that you could handle that. Um, another thing I've seen some people do is, you know, they have they have that promo code in there and it doesn't necessarily expire. So some people do that. They'll say it expires, um, but it, it actually will work for like a month or two. Um, I don't recommend that uh, because you're you know, not being quite super honest with your subscriber, uh, but I would recommend a way of switching out your promo code on a weekly basis. And at the end of the day, your promo code is just for people that take your mini course. So you don't necessarily need to say that it is expiring. You could just say to them, hey, like I have this special promo code just for you. Um, I may not offer this promo code forever so make sure to take advantage of it before I stop offering it uh, and that may be that you might decide to stop offering it in six months but that way you're being a little bit uh, more straightforward of that uh, so Belinda asks will you have access to the presentation yes I'll be sending a recording afterwards <laughs> Allison uh, said that the video at the beginning of the of the webinar was awful I agree Let's see. So uh, Rashid asks, do you think a live web a live webinar intro can be effective as a mini course? Um, so do you mean like a live webinar like we're having today? Uh, so like you're giving value to people in a similar way as a mini course? Uh, if that's what you're saying, Rashid, I, I uh, oh yes, he says yes. <laughs> uh, I, I think so. I think uh, a live webinar would be another great way to give value to people. Uh, you could promote that via email um, and give that value and that education to people, start building a relationship. And uh, then that's also a great way to grow your email list. So people like webinars because they get to learn at them and they get to interact with a, a live person. So that's a great way to definitely grow your list. And it also webinars are great because they show you that uh, they show off your, your knowledge and your expertise and they show off that you're a good instructor. Uh, and then uh, Ida pointed out, great, great, great thing to point out, Ida. She says, tip, you can add coupon codes in Thinkific with or without an expiring date. Yes, this is very true. We host our own course in Thinkific, and we have both promo codes that expire and promo codes that don't expire uh, with that course. And Diane says, thanks so much. And I think that's the end of questions that I have. Um, Actually, Carol asks, can you attach a file or a PDF, for instance, to automated emails through Aweber? Yes, you can do this. I don't necessarily recommend doing it. I think it would be better to create a hosted PDF um, or to uh, create a Google Doc. You could host your file in, a, in um, sorry, Google Drive, and then you could have a Google Drive link that you include in your Aweber email. Uh, so you could attach files, but I recommend instead using a link. And you could do that through Google Drive. So you would just import your PDF or document to Google Drive, and then it would give you a link which you could share with people. Uh, so let's see. I think, OK, so I think I'm at the end of questions now. Uh, Michelle says, thank you, Liz. Good info. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks for joining. Uh, uh, thanks for joining. Well, actually, no. I just saw I just saw one more question from Diane. How does a mini course help you grow a list since you're only sending the invite to your list? Uh, so you would your mini course helps you grow your list because you promote your mini course on your email sign up form on your website. So those people who visit your website aren't necessarily on your list yet. 
So you're trying to get them to join your list by filling out that sign-up form. And they fill out the sign-up form so that they can get your mini course. So the mini course is an incentive for people to join your list. And you could have that website, you could have that sign-up form on your website, but you could also email it to people or post it in Facebook or in Twitter and just say, hey guys, this is my free mini course. Uh, feel free to join it here uh, via the sign-up form. So that's how it uh, oh, grows your list. Okay, so I think I'm at the end of email, uh, the end of questions, but I'm gonna post my email address in the chat window for you guys. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. It's in there. It's elizabethw at aweber.com. And that's Elizabeth with an S. It's an odd spelling. So uh, uh, just so you're aware, it's an odd spelling. And I also have that 30-day free trial link in there. I hope you guys will take advantage of it. And don't forget to sign up for the uh, what to write in your emails course. That's a completely free course. And it's absolutely amazing. I love it. And I'll post, let me actually drop one more, one more course into chat for you guys. We have this email list growth blueprint course. And that's a video course that'll help you grow your email list and give you more tips than what I taught you today. It'll show you how to create a sign-up form and an incentive. And the course doesn't talk about uh, mini courses as an incentive, but you could instead of uh, the incentive I talk about in the course, you could just create your mini course, but it'll show you how to create a signup form and explain some cool tools you can use to build your signup form. Okay, so I think I'm at the end of questions. Uh, again, I will be sending out the replay to you all and thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you guys being here and I'm so glad to talk to you guys about email marketing. Uh, if uh, if you want to get in touch with me, my email is in the chat box. And again, I hope you'll take advantage of that 30-day trial at bit.ly forward slash aweber-30-3. Thank you guys again for joining, and uh, thanks, Patty, for having me. You're very welcome. Thanks ever so much. I learned tons of content here. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys, have a great Wednesday.